Okay, guys, this is lecture 14, our last lecture, and this is mastering. We're going to be talking about the last step. Uh, the last three lectures were about mixing, one, two, and three, and um, the whole point of mixing really is to get finished, uh, to get to a finished product, something that you think is done, that it's as close to perfect as you can get it, and then mastering is where we kind of... Uh, put the polish on. Now, most of the time, I can't say most, a lot of the time, uh, a mastering engineer is a different engineer from the, from the mix engineer. But for those of us that are in a, a small uh, studio, we don't usually have the option of sending a project off to be mastered. That costs a lot of money. So we have to learn to do it ourselves. And I'm going to be using a plugin from Isotope called Ozone. Now, I'm going to show you a little bit later what types of things that are actually stock and logic that you can use uh, to approximate some of this, but we're going to learn about it in Ozone, which is a mastering software, uh, because it just puts all the tools in one spot, and it's a lot easier. Uh, we've got six tools here. There's an EQ, which does uh, broad boosts and cuts across uh, eight different points on the spectrum here, and all these points are kind of preset at very useful uh, frequency points, places where you probably would uh, need to do some work in a typical mix. So that's pretty handy. We've got a little bit of reverb. If you ended up not putting quite enough reverb on during your tracking process, sometimes you can get away with putting a little bit over the entire mix. Sometimes you can't. But there it is, just in case you wanted to try it. The loudness maximizer. This thing is kind of like a limiter, sort of a compressor, that will take the peaks down and bring the bottom up, but it does it in a very, very um, musical way. So you get your mix louder, and this may be the most important tool here, uh, because you do uh, want your mix to be as loud as it can be without hurting the, um, the musicality of it. Most folks, they hear a, a, a quiet um, file that doesn't sound as loud as, as, as other CDs and other, other files uh, on your um, playlist, and it just, it's annoying to have to turn up the volume. Uh, people perceive that as a lack of quality, even if it's not. So that's pretty important, the loudness maximizer. Here's the multiband harmonic exciter. This thing adds harmonic distortion just ever so slightly to the four different frequency bands here we've got uh, marked above. Uh, you can make things a little bit brighter by doing something like this. You can make things a little warmer by boosting the lows. It functions a little bit like an EQ, but it sounds different somehow, and we'll listen to that in a minute. Multi-band dynamics. This is a compressor for each individual frequency range. And uh, it's not affected by the compressor. Uh, for instance, on this frequency, uh, range has its own compressor, and it, it, and it doesn't do anything in relation to this one or this one or this one. So sometimes these things can be really useful to, to increase the punch factor uh, and, the, and the level on your mix. And then finally, we've got the stereo imaging. And this will be useful sometimes when you're trying to uh, open up more space. Uh, basically, it pulls things to the left and to the right. It widens them uh, up. Almost like if you had two microphones in AB recording in stereo, and you just pulled them further apart from each other to make, the, make them wider and wider. Uh, that's kind of a similar effect. You can also pull things to the middle. For instance, if you wanted your, your low-end uh, instruments, if they were recorded in stereo, but you wanted them tighter, you could pull them to the center this way. Whereas things at the upper end could be spread out further to the left and to the right like that. I'm not a, much of a fan of this particular tool, although I could see someone using it more maybe in electronic music versus uh, the type of stuff a live band's recording. So let's take a look at it. We're going to play our audio that we left off with after mixing and see where we're at. Sinking song 
does Shake your shit On the surface Storm rages on Up beneath it's quiet oh, I quit trying Fight the peace of endings So it's a pretty pretty dramatic difference, um, mostly just because of the volume. You hear a big difference in the volume there. But we also did a few other things. Uh, over with the EQ, I brought a little bit out in the mud range, 1.5 dB at 180 hertz and 520 hertz. Uh, I also gave it a very gentle uh, shelf at just 0.5 dB uh, at the upper end. With the harmonic exciter, I just put a very small boost across all four bands to kind of give it uh, a little bit more color overall. Uh, I didn't use any reverb. I didn't use any dynamics or stereo imaging. Um, I don't really think I need it. Let's listen a little further on and see what we think. When you I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, get obnoxious just so you can see what some of these things do. Um, I probably wouldn't use them, but you can, you can listen and see what you think. Way overdone, of course, just so you can hear it. So now what I'm going to do is play back and make sure that I'm just getting a little bit of reduction on each one of these frequency bands. And if I'm getting too much, then I'll raise my threshold a little bit. And so the trick here would be, now that I've reduced the, the uh, peaks a little bit, is to come back and maybe just give a little boost to everything. This is one way, just one of the many options of trying to use the multiband dynamics. When you justify everything that you've done And there's no uh, magic um, uh, formula. You can just kind of uh, mess with it a little bit. I'm going to give it some more gain and see if I like that better. Probably will just because it's going to make it louder. And then finally, uh, we'll look over here at the stereo imager. I don't think it's going to do a whole lot for us, though, because there's not much stereo going on with this mix. And it feels like ever since you've gone All I am is a sinking stone I kind of made it uh, maxed out there just to try to exaggerate the effect. And you do hear that it kind of... Uh, gives you more spaciousness, but um, I'm not sold on it being a good thing necessarily for this mix, <laughs> for sure. When you justify everything that you've done, you don't change the fact that you were... Although I can't deny that there is something kind of fun about hearing that extra space in there. Um, you know, I might do something like back it halfway down and see how... Only 50% as much. See how that sounds. You know, 
know, I didn't think I was going to like it, but I might actually leave it on for a while. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's starting to grow on me. Um, so there you go. That's just a kind of a quick crash course in mastering. Listen, mastering is its own multi-class discipline. I've got a book by Bob Katz uh, called Mastering Audio. Highly recommend it. It's really good. Um, it is absolutely an academic subject. Uh, we like everything else in this uh, course, we've just barely scratched the surface, literally just barely scratched the surface. Uh, so these are the types of things where hopefully we're just opening uh, your eyes to what's possible. And then if you're interested in, in these things, you'll now know enough to be able to kind of go out and chase down some of the more advanced techniques uh, and, and then put them into practice as you're, as you're doing these types of, uh, these types of jobs. I told you I was going to show you what you can use in Logic, since this is not going to be an option in the Synth Lab. Uh, one thing is under uh, Dynamics, and the Adaptive Limiter is really similar to the uh, Loudness Maximizer uh, in a lot of ways. So you could play with that on your on your stereo output bus. The Multipressor is very similar to the um, Multiband Dynamics. And then, you know, you can use uh, any EQ that you want and do the same types of EQ tweaks that we were just using with Ozone. I will say this, um, as good as Logic is and as great as their plugins sound, I've always felt like the Ozone plugins had a really nice musical sound to them. A lot of the times, um, I would even go so far as to use Ozone EQ uh, as opposed to stock Logic EQ. Uh, just because I think that sometimes it sounds a little bit more uh, musical. So those are the types of things that you can argue with people about until the cows come home and no one's ever going to win, but you've just kind of got to decide what your ears are telling you. And, and, you know, you trust your ears. If you think one thing sounds better than another, uh, then you probably want to use the thing that sounds best. So you can now kind of take these ideas and polish up your mix from the session uh, having taken it through all those steps um, and hopefully gotten some practice in on these ideas. And we'll get a chance to listen to those, I hope, really soon.